Thank you all for joining us. We have an exciting announcement to share with you today. Uh, this is an announcement that is really a landmark moment in a many years long endeavor for our city. When we went to the voters almost a decade ago now with a vision to rebuild and reconnect this once vibrant part of the downtown core, we were really trying to accomplish three big things. We were trying to, first of all, build a lot more homes. We were also trying to restore the street grid and connectivity for both vehicles and pedestrians that was lost during urban renewal. And we were attempting to update aging infrastructure under our streets and to transform these city blocks into great public spaces for everyone to enjoy every day. In, always a challenge doing press conference on the street. Um, in many ways from the start, this project has been an attempt to repair the damage that was done to this part of the city when Burlington, like so many other American downtowns, tore down a large swath of, of the downtown as part of the federal urban renewal program. Big goals like these, big goals like we set out to achieve are, are not easy. They require vision, hard work, and persistence. And there were many times over the last decade when it seemed like this effort would fail. First, this project, you may remember, faced some organized opposition, then construction delays, at the City Place project and a revised, somewhat smaller project shrunk the capacity of the TIF district, which was an initial plan to pay for all of the new public infrastructure that we had hoped to build. Um, and then probably the, and one of the biggest challenges over the last couple of years, historic inflation combined with rising interest rates created even more hurdles, putting our, really the ability to complete the full public infrastructure project very much at risk. But our city team, with the confidence of the voters who understood from the start the impact of this project, kept fighting for that initial vision laid out in Plan BTV to see this once vibrant residential neighborhood restored in the heart of our city. Um, we uh, also took action against the original developer, Don Sinex, to get control of the streets running through the site. Um, and we collaborated with the new City Place partners, who I'm very happy are, are here with us today. At least two of the, 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 the trio of three, Dave Farrington, Al Senecal, thank you for your partnership. Thank you for being here. Thank you for what you're, you're doing, which was the essential, uh, essential in making this happen. Uh, we um, have been collaborating with these new partners and uh, last November, uh, even though there were a lot still to be worked out, that, that construction project got underway and as you can see it's going full steam now. Um, we also uh, sought to additional resources, since it was clear the TIF project alone wasn't going to be able to pay for the full vision, we sought additional resources to close the funding gap on what will now be a nearly $50 million public reinvestment in the downtown. Today, we are very excited to announce that Burlington has been awarded a more than $22 million Rebuilding American Infrastructure with Sustainability and Equity Grant, a RAISE grant. This grant, combined with $12 million in congressionally directed funds secured by Senator Leahy before his retirement, and $16 million that will still be coming from the Waterfront TIF investment, ensures that this project to reconnect downtown Burlington will, will be realized in the coming years. When we went to voters in 2016, we envisioned up to six blocks of city streets along with two new streets, the reconnected Pine and Strait Paul Street being built, so eight blocks. With these new federal funds, it is now clear that not only we're we going to be able to build those eight blocks, we're going to be able to do two additional blocks. So 10 blocks altogether will be rebuilt in the next few years, reconnecting this neighborhood from north to south, creating great new outdoor public spaces and improving public transportation and creating the public infrastructure that supports new housing and economic opportunities in this vital part of the downtown. Before you leave today, I hope you will all head down and take a look at what's going on on the construction site. You can see that the um, there's a lot of the, the new buildings are going up. The first uh, pieces of the work for the new public infrastructure is being built is underway now as well. 
and the rest, the other eight blocks that are now funded, these three blocks from Winooski to the end of uh, Winooski, uh, sorry, from Winooski to the to um, uh, to Pine Street uh, at the end of Bank Street here, uh, as well as five blocks of Cherry Street. All of that work um, is projected to start construction in at the end, approximately the end of 2024. So, um, in a moment, we have a bunch of other speakers. I'm going to ca call up here. We're so grateful to have them all here. Um, before doing that, I do just want to say a couple thank yous to uh, people that um, we won't be hearing from. In addition to the, the City Place partners, other uh, property owners here on Bank Street and Cherry Street, we worked with them to secure the right of way for this infrastructure project that involved uh, work with um, the Larkin company as well as Doug Nettie, these companies and the owners of 100 Bank Street, the Redstone companies. Uh, I also want to thank the, the DPW team who has worked so hard to make this project a reality for years now. We have city engineer Norm Baldwin here. Um, I'm not, and we do have Laura Wheelock, our senior engineer, who has really shepherded this project for many years and been personally committed to making sure it happens. Thank you, Laura. Um, I, I want to, I, I believe Brian Pine from CETO is right here as well. Brian Pine and the CETO team have been critical to this project in so many ways from the creation of the TIF district to the, uh, uh, to, to all the community work that's been involved in the creation of this uh, uh, workforce development project that is also part of today's announcement. In addition to the federal funding for construction, there's also one, approximately one and a half million dollars for creating jobs in the, um, uh, and working with the local community to create job opportunities. It, we also uh, are very grateful to Vermont Trans, VTrans, Vermont, uh, and Michelle Boomauer and, and your colleagues at VTrans. And then finally, uh, I do see Nicole back there. This is, um, we, we created about a year ago, a grant writing team to go after the new particularly federal opportunities created by the recent Congress. And this is uh, the biggest success yet by far. Uh, this is one of the largest federal grants the city's ever been awarded. So congratulations, Nicole, for your work there. Um, so with that, uh, we are very grateful to the federal delegation, the entire federal de de delegation. Um, I want to thank Aaron Monkey, who's here on behalf of Senator Sanders. Um, we also have several representatives. Uh, I believe Luke, uh, uh, we, we, uh, we have a uh, a Becca Balint uh, Congressional Office. Thank you for being here. And um, finally, um, uh, I am very grateful that we were able to be joined today by Senator Welch, my old friend from from uh, growing up in Heartland. Uh, it's pretty exciting, Senator Peter, to be able to announce this with you today. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Moreau. Moreau, Moreau and I went hiking. He left me in the dust on Mount Washington. I'll tell you, they're still looking for me. I am so excited to be here, and I'll tell you why. You know, I part of the Washington delegation. Work closely with Bernie, with Patrick, uh, with Becca, and there's a lot of dismay folks have about what goes on in Washington. What we're trying to do is get the funds back to the communities that they need to do the hard work of revitalizing their community. And that we were able in the infrastructure bill through a raise grant to get 22 million that is gonna come right here to Burlington along with the $12 million earmark of Senator Leahy where the work begins about housing about downtown neighborhoods that are livable, that invite people to be present, that are welcoming to young families, where there's a coexistence by the efforts of our businesses that are represented here, by our city planners, by the Burlington taxpayers who committed themselves to this project. What you end up having is government working for the people the way it's supposed to work. It's a partnership. The federal government has more resources that can then be sent back to our communities. 
And as hard as the work is that Bernie and Patrick and, and, and Becca and I do, trying to wrestle through the resolution of some of these fights that just go off the rails oftentimes down in DC, as hard as that work is and as happy as all of us are that we had success with this money that's coming to do real things in Burlington, the hard work is right here. It's people facing the challenges. It can be inflation. It can be the permit process. It can be access to contractors. It, be, it can be getting the workforce. It's having a business model that's going to be sustainable. That takes effort. And that's the hard work. And what I'm so proud of is that we've got people here in Burlington from the business sector, from the government sector, from the retail sector that are willing and able to persist, do the work, and then transform this community. And by the way, what the work that when this is done, this will be here for generations. Our grandchildren and their grandchildren will be enjoying, enjoying the benefit of this. And what better testament to the future and our commitment to it than by taking on the ambition of a big project about enhancing the livability and the sustainability of the place where we live. So I salute all of the folks who are here who not only have brought us to this point, but who are accepting the responsibility to get us to the end. So uh, Mayor Weinberger, thank you so much for your leadership uh, in City Hall and all who are here with you uh, thank you for your efforts that are going to continue. The work begins now. Thank you very much. So um, let, I, I'm not sure I quite managed to say it. I think what you, Senator, have done, what Senator Sanders has done, uh, as well as Congresswoman Balin, with uh, this new focus on infrastructure, on getting this bipartisan bill uh, led by President Biden getting it done is, is this is a great example of the transformative impact it's, it is having and we're really very grateful for it. Um, I, I just um, need to just change up the order quickly. We're about to lose Mark Sherman, who is the owner of Raptor Gear Exchange. They've been a great partner through all this transformation in the downtown, put up with quite a bit through it. Uh, excited to have you with us here today, Mark. So uh, Outdoor Gear Exchange started in 1995 on Main Street and has, through the past 28 years, been committed to Burlington's thriving Church Street Marketplace and broader downtown. The work done by the Weinberger administration to bring downtown blocks up to the Great Street standards has been key in keeping Burlington growing and improving. Adding Bank and Cherry Streets to the Great Streets program over the coming years will be another huge step in keeping the Queen City in keeping the Queen City on the forefront of downtown vitalization. I say vitalization because we don't need to revitalize the city. It is vital right now. This, along with the completion of the city place, will continue to expand the shopping district beyond Church Street and in doing so, bring more and more strength and diversity to the downtown shopping district and help support the many local businesses like ours that have and continue to invest in the community and make Burlington a great place to live and visit. We look forward to seeing this project get underway. Thank you. Thank you for your work. So Mark, uh, Mark mentioned the great street standards. What everyone should have in mind in understanding what that means is the two new blocks of lower St. Paul Street that between Main Street and Maple Street that were built just several years ago. Those same standards are what is going to be applied what is gonna be built over uh, all 10 of these blocks, similar standards to what the new Main Street project was about to get started is gonna be built to as well. Um, I wanna next welcome to the podium here, Michelle Boomhauer. She's the Division Director of Policy and Planning and Intermodal De Development uh, Division at, at the Vermont Agency of Transportation. Michelle, uh, in this role and her prior role at the Regional Planning Commission has just been a great partner to Burlington in so many ways as has all of the Vermont Agency of Transportation, and we're really grateful to have you here today to celebrate this milestone. Welcome, Michelle. Thank you, Mayor. <laughs> Having grown up in Chittenden County, it's great to see these improvements and enhancements that have happened over my lifetime. Um, the Agency of Transportation is thrilled to have a national grant of 
this scale awarded to the city of Burlington. Over the past decade, we've partnered with the mayor and his staff to improve transportation safety and community connectivity, delivering projects which have been decades in the making. This project will close the chapter on the 60s and 70s urban renewal error policies and designs, which oriented the city around the car, returning the streets now to all users, which is very exciting. Transportation and land use are inextricably linked, and we are really excited that the elements are coming together um, through the city process. Many thanks to our congressional delegation for their support of the multimodal transportation projects, which support equitable access and safe streets for all Vermonters, and especially here in the Queen City. Thank you very much. Now, um, I did want to recognize also, I, I left him off before, part of the, the DPW team, of course, is our DPW director, Chapin Spencer, who's also been very committed to this, and Cara al Nizrawi, who is the head of our business and workforce development department. So yeah. it's great to, it, we are, see, people of Burlington are very fortunate to have so many talented and committed department heads. Um, next, we are gonna hear from uh, another neighbor uh, of the City Place Project and another um, key anchor on the, on Cherry Street, the, what will be the new Cherry Street soon, and that's Hans Van Wies from Hotel, Hotel Vermont. Welcome, Hans. Thank you. Great to see you, Senator. Welcome, you Mayor. Thank you, everybody present. Um, and thank you for the work done. When I heard you managed to get a $22 million grant, that is phenomenal work. Um, and, and thank you for your work done on reconnecting Burlington downtown and upgrading Cherry Street and Bank Streets to the uh, Great Street standards. We at Hotel Vermont have actually been ready for this project since 2013 when we opened our doors. Uh, which is 10 years. We're celebrating our 10th anniversary. And Hotel Vermont was actually the last parcel of the urban redevelopment project that was being redeveloped. Uh, so that is uh, over 10 years ago. In the early 1900s, this neighborhood, I'm talking near our hotel, was known as Little Italy. It was bustling with activity led by entrepreneurs like Alfred Parada, a grocer on Cherry Street, and Bellinos, a store on the corner of Battery and uh, Cherry Street. Following the opening of Hotel Vermont in 2013 and the, uh, the Courtyard Burlington Harbor Hotel in 2007, uh, Cherry Street started once again to become a destination for locals and visitors alike. In fact, between the two hotels, we've hosted, hosted over 750,000 people uh, in, uh, at our hotels, coming just to stay over at the hotels, in addition to all those visiting the restaurants. Uh, together with our neighbors uh, on the streets, uh, particularly also Three Cathedral Square, our neighbors across the road, uh, efforts were undertaken early on to help to improve the bottom of Cherry Street uh, and to create more of a neighborhood. What was missing, however, was a suitable streetscape promoting a healthy neighborhood. We are excited now that the City Place project is underway, providing much needed housing and residential use of Cherry Street. This federal grant will provide the opportunity to recreate a real neighborhood making Cherry Street and Bank Street streets to be proud of, befitting the beauty of Burlington and this unique neighborhood. We are thankful to our congressional delegation, Senators Lay, Sanders and Welch, in securing earlier funding as well for 12 million, and look forward to, work, <clears throat> to working with city government, our neighbors, and other businesses to welcome the new Cherry Street soon. Thank you. Okay, and finally, we have a real treat. We've been joined today by Monica Farrington, who, when she was growing up, lived in the old neighborhood here that was lost and that we are now taking this step towards using properly as a, a, a downtown neighborhood once again. Um, understanding the classic small world that is Vermont, uh, Monica has a connection with the other Farrington that, that's here. I'll let her call that out. but. Uh, um, it, is, uh, it is great to have you here with us, Monica. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> wow. um. Hello. 
Um, I had a three-hour speech, but they told me I had to cut it down to three minutes. So don't mind me if I'm jumping all around. But basically, I grew up about three blocks down on South Champlain Street in this house, which my grandparents had purchased in the 1920s. It had a 20-room mansion type and a, a four-room little house in the back. My grandparents bought a car and took a picture of them, had someone take a picture of them. So this is how long my family had been there. The, I don't, I'm not into cars, I can't tell you what this is, but um, that's my, my grandmother and my grandfather. They had immigrated from Lebanon from a Christian village called Hadith al in 1890. And, she, and he came first and saved the money and sent money for her and she came in 1900. I have their paperwork. So my mother and her five sisters and their brother were all born here in Vermont. And that switched between Barrie and Burlington. My grandfather couldn't make up his mind whether he wanted to be a farmer in Barrie or a little shopkeeper in Burlington. So he'd switch the family back and forth. Long story short, my mother married a man from Winooski and, I, and they were living in Winooski. That area is also torn down with urban renewal. That was um, East Center Street, that's gone. Um, so my mother and father split when I was a little kid. I was born in 1941 and they split around 1945, 44, 45. My mother moved back into Burlington. Hello. I guess they're joining me. Are they, are they applauding? Okay, so we, we moved back into this. My mother and I moved back into this little house in the backyard. And I went to Cathedral. Oh, one thing I wanted to say, I told you I have to cut this three hour speech down so short. Yeah. Um, it was a safe neighborhood. We could walk anywhere and not get accosted and not get shot, and not get tripped and pocketbooks stolen or anything like that. Long story short, it was also convenient to everything. There were neighborhood grocery stores. My dentist was upstairs over Kresge's store, which was one of the two dime stores on Church Street. My school was Cathedral Grammar, which I could walk to, and that was over on that block. My church was Cathedral Church, which is burned down. So anyway, you could go anywhere. You could walk to the hospital if you wanted, or you could catch the bus on the corner and go. Nobody needed a car. There were very few cars, and we walked everywhere in our neighborhood. When I was 15, I got a job selling tickets at the State Theater right here, where the farmhouse is now and that was the state theater and we had double features because they were second runs um, long so that was fun I decided I needed to be Annie Oakley when that movie came by Annie get your gun and I watched it multiple times anyway um, I ended up at Cathedral High School and then our my senior year graduated from Rice Memorial High School and I went on to UVM from there, four years, walking from South Champlain Street to the university campus. Walk, walk, walk. Um, anyway, so I wanted to talk about diversity of our old neighborhood, and I made some notes here, if I can find them, um, that it, it was ethnically diverse. A lot of us were Lebanese, Catholic, Catholic, yeah, uh, Catholic, Protestant, and Jewish um, at the time. Um, there were Italians, mostly Italians, um, but it was quite a mix in French and English. And the uh, um, one representative of the French families were the Moquins Bakery that some of you have probably heard about. Um, it, there were some pictures recently posted on Vermont area history online on Facebook. Um, by religion, we were diverse. There was some of everything here. And then by occupations, we ran from blue collar. My mother worked in the, after working in the mills of Winooski, she switched to this factory, the sewing factories in the back of College Street. And so the, she could walk to work and sew at the sewing factories. My stepfather worked, by then I had a stepfather, <laughs> and he worked at uh, Champlain Valley Fruit Company, which had its fruit and vegetables and groceries and beer come in on the railroad. And he was on, he worked overnight on the railroad platform, unloading the rail cars and putting them in trucks that went to the local grocery stores. No car needed. He walked to work, he walked back home again. Um, we also had Dr. Hogan, um, who had a doctor's office. 
We had Dr. Eastman, who had an obstetrics office down on College Street. Um, we had uh, Mike Corey, who had a gas station. There was some of everything in a, in a little grocery store on every corner. And the Contois family, you all know the Contois Auditorium is named after Raymond Contois. His family's home got taken with this movement too. Um, and he was city treasurer of Burlington and his wife was one of the very two first female police women in, in the state. So that was really cool. Uh, Mr. Antonisi was a barber. He lived across the street in his home, but he had a barber shop about three doors up at, in the next block, the block that was between Bank and Cherry. Our block was Bank down to college. There was a lawyer named Mr. Hopkins. There were bankers named the, the Morgans, the Morgan family. So my point is that, that we were diverse in occupations and in education and in religion and in everything. It was just amazing. Um, the prices that, the, that Urban Renewal paid everybody and devastated them basically um, were just obscene. This house that was my grandparents with the second house in the back, that housed five families that got paid 16,500 and by the Urban Renewal Authorities. They also had a catch-22 clause that if you sued in court and the court came up with a lower appraisal than what you were offered, you had to pay the difference. And so they, they caught you. you we, people were afraid to sue. My family did sue. By then my mother had, my grandmother had died and my mother and her five sisters sued. And, um, and everything was wonderful. Except, um, let me tell you about something that happened that was very sad. My mother had a little brother, and he was given a sled a few days before Christmas. He went sliding down College Street and got hit, got run over by a truck on Battery Street. So we had this tragedy in our family, too. And this is my mother and dad. Um, the property behind them is all Pine Street. And with that, I will relieve you of listening to my mouth. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Monica. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, all right. Who's this? There you go. Thank you, Monica. Thank you. Um, Thank you. One uh, um, last, last point, what did we, uh, may have just lost her, but uh, Megan Tuttle is our planning director. This also, again, this goes all the way back. May, I know, Dan, you were around for this when Plan BTV was a city planning planning document that really kind of set this all in motion back in 20, 2011 and 2012. And so also the planning department, a big part of this. So with that, um, thank you all for being here. We'd be happy to, to take a, uh, a few questions if there are any. So obviously this is a lot of construction that's happening down here. Is there going to be a way to stagger it so you know all these streets aren't going to be happening at once, including with the Main Street project? Yeah, Catherine. So um, absolutely. Uh, you may remember we recently there there is so much investment going on and so much federal investment. We've been, we have been working with VTrans uh, and Federal Highway to coordinate these projects. You really saw really the city's not in recent memory had kind of a coordinated plan like we have for the South End recently. Now that these uh, awards have been made, um, I'm yeah, sure we will be doing something similar for, for, for the downtown. Uh, Chapin, you want to add any detail on that? I mean, it, it's, it's really, you know, these awards have just happened and, and the final schedules haven't been settled on. But uh, the Main Street project, we are looking to get going, you know, either at the end of this year or the beginning of next year. And then we're talking the, the new streets are starting now through the mile properties. Cherry Street and Bank Street, uh, like I mentioned before, we're looking at um, at the earliest, or, you know, around a late 2024 20, start. So um, there's definitely going to be a lot going on in the downtown. I, uh, I know we got Kelly Devine from the Burlington Business Association here. She will be uh, in my office uh, making sure this is all well coordinated and we're communicating well with any impacted business. I mean, there is no way to do this type of construction without there being some level of disruption. Our teams have gotten really good at working with the impacted property owners and, and working to minimize those disruptions. We'll certainly be doing that here. And will this money be able to give taxpayers any sort of break through any of the different funding? I know a lot of, some of this is TIF, I believe, right? Yeah. 
So yeah, I mean, absolutely. There, uh, I mean, basically of this, what we're uh, total budget now uh, approaching 50 million. There will, uh, at, at this point, um, I believe we have 600,000 of that funded from um, uh, property tax dollars. The rest is being leveraged through one, one program or another. Certainly the TIF, TIF program is a significant part of that, which is, um, you know, future property taxes, but um, it is uh, it is pretty remarkable, I think, that we will be able to do something approaching $50 million of infrastructure investment with um, uh, that small of a fraction being um, carried by current property taxpayers. Can you talk more about the workforce development? Yeah. Um, the, uh, so from, I, I will start and Brian, are, are you, are, 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 Brian, you want to speak a little bit more to it? I mean, workforce development uh, has been part of the goal of the City Place project from the start. The development agreement that we have with City Place Partners uh, has a number of commitments and requirements to paying fair wages and to um, uh, working to create lo local talent. Uh, what this does is add to that actual federal dollars to, to put meaning behind that. Do you want to add a little more on that? Sure. I, I think it's um, the workforce development piece is really intended to um, ensure that the economic opportunity that comes from this project, that some of that benefit flows to historically disadvantaged and marginalized populations. So the focus is on low-income youth, youth of color, to develop the skills in order to fill jobs in the higher-paying construction industry. Um, Monica asked us to oh, mention the video yeah, that she has. Yeah, of course. Yeah, this is, for, yeah, this is great. Here, Go so. ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Wanna... Um, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Hello, break it down. Um, 20 years ago, my son started a four year project on his own with his own money, shooting, interviewing, doing everything himself, and doing all the research. And he came out with this video, the Champlain Street Urban Renewal um, Project. We had, in, in that day, 20 years ago, there were multiple showings. Available. Take a look on YouTube because he's got some beautiful photos of the old neighborhood and a history of how it all happened. And he's got interviews with the developers and that sort of thing. And it's on YouTube, uh, the Champlain Street Urban Renewal Project by Patrick Farrington. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Here, again, the, the, if people couldn't hear that, the Champlain Street Urban Renewal Project. I remember watching this uh, video. It's a great document. The documentary on on what happened I in this neighborhood. I watched again last night yeah. myself. And I, yeah, uh, it's awesome. Hi. Hi. I have a question. As sure. a former occupant of 100 Bank Street before the pandemic that forced us to close, what are you doing, and what part of this 22 million is dedicated to multiculturalism around downtown, which will bring diversity as well as entrepreneurship in obtaining space. How much of the 22 million yeah. is being allotted to that? <clears throat> so, um, I'm not familiar with uh, what you're saying at Hunter Brank exactly. I'd be happy to talk to you offline about it. The, the um, As you just heard, there is a significant piece of this federal money is going towards uh, job creation and with a specific focus on, on equity. The name of this uh, federal program is to do infrastructure while being focused on equity. So there's a big focus on uh, workforce as, as a piece of that. Um, in terms of uh, what is going to be in the downtown going forward, we certainly think that bringing that there's going to be, we're going from a situation where this part of the downtown was dominated by a uh, one and a half story suburban mall to one where there will be thousands of people living and and uh, and hundreds of jobs and there the city team will certainly be working to make sure that that is done in as an equitable way uh, as we can as that comes in and to be and we have happy to talk to you more about that well part of the question was what part of bringing yeah. multiculturalism more downtown you know, entrepreneurs who are of color mm -hmm. think we're going to bring about more jobs Hi. Hi, I'm the Director of Business and Workforce Development, okay. and we actually have two employees fully dedicated to helping um, our BIPOC community and our LGBTQ community um, help start businesses. Mm -hmm. 
and we have uh, micro business programs we have zero interest revolving loan programs and we also offer technical support you can come to my office anytime and we can sit down and work with you we can help you find locations help you work with your landlord and help get you established we open yes okay. yes you had the hair salon yes yes uh, i remember okay. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mayor, did you uh, said two blocks were added as a result of the Yes. Wait, which two? It's really the, the initial project Dan envisioned coming um, up from the lake to Church Street. We now can do one block more on both Cherry Street and Bank Street. Okay, thank you all for, for being here. Thank you all for being part of this. Appreciate you coming out in the heat. And congrats to everyone involved again. I'm Al Senecal, and I'm here with Dave Farrington from uh, City Place Builders. In the background, you can see the, uh, the cranes and the towers, the stair towers that have been uh, built. Uh, the crane on the right-hand side is building foundations, and the one on the left is uh, erecting steel. And uh, the project is uh, moving very quickly now, and uh, that's all I can say at this point. I don't know if Dave has anything yeah. to say. Out of the, uh, the south building, which is the building that's on uh, Bank Street, we're all done the foundation work, and they're doing steel erection now. Um, it'll be going up over the next three months, up to uh, 10 stories tall. And um, then you'll see it getting closed in over the, the late, late summer and early fall. We'll be closing in, getting windows in there. And, and then we disappear inside for about a year and finish it up. And the, the following spring, we'll be doing some of the exterior finish work. And uh, we're hoping to be done at the end of uh, 2024 with the South Building.